Hey guys, we are back again. Um, it is no longer Halloween. It's actually the week after Halloween. I am also very sick, but here we are about to sit down and film a video on haunted dolls. Cheers. <laughs> I feel like I need to adjust you guys again. I'm gonna do a little makeup today. Oh, oh, okay, okay, or not. Is this a look? Like, is seeing my pits a look? I feel like, I don't know. I'm sorry guys, I am so annoyed right now. I don't know what's going on. Everyone decided to show up and work on their yards all at once, all the neighbors together as one in unison, probably about to break into song, honestly. <laughs> It's gotten worse. <sighs> so I think that they have stopped outside and we can resume back to our television program. So I really want to talk about Annabelle the doll. You guys have heard about Nesper, right? The New England Society for Psychic Research. If you guys don't follow The Conjuring Universe, it was created by Ed and Lorraine Warren. And if y'all don't know, those two have a lot of controversy surrounding them. So whether you believe that they were the best paranormal hunters of all time or just con artists, a story like this did go down. It's a little hard to tell whenever you're just talking about like people's reaccounts of the story as opposed to like actual fact. But this is apparently the true story behind Annabelle. So these two roommates were living with each other and they were roommates. And they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. One was named Donna and the other one was named Angie. I'm not really sure what Angie's major was, but Donna was a nursing student and she loved vintage things. So her mom ended up buying her this old Raggedy Ann doll, if you guys remember what those look like. And let me tell you guys, Donna really loved this doll. She really cherished it. She moved it into the apartment with her and Angie and some weird things started to go down. Some weird things started to happen. There was reports of this doll literally just moving rooms. Like they would set it down in one room and then they would come home and it was in another room. So they're like, oh, that's a little, that's a little fishy. That's suspicious. That's weird. So they were like, yo, is this doll walking and standing by itself? And there's actually reports later on of them physically seeing this doll walk, which doesn't really make sense to me because like how would you get up on like your little like raggedy ann legs and start running as opposed to just levitating? Like I feel like I feel like levitating makes more sense to me than her just like walking step by step. Wait, actually have you guys seen that one doll that only walks with that lady? I'm gonna see if I can put in a clip of it, but now that's kind of what I'm picturing. This doll only walks with Rosa and no one else. After putting her daughter's clothes on the doll, her daughter died 60 years ago. And ever since, for the last 60 years, Rosa has been dressing Rosita and somehow walking with her. That honestly is so freaky. I believe her daughter passed away and they think that her daughter's soul haunts that doll. So Angie and Donna had a bestie named Lou and he came over and he was very freaked out by the doll. And he was like, you guys have to get rid of this. I get a bad vibe. I don't know if he was just very intuitive or what was going on, but he was not down for this doll. Then the girls started to find various notes from the doll on parchment paper. And it looked like child's writing. It was using parchment paper and crowns, even though they didn't have either of those items in the house. Yet somehow Raggedy Ann was just, you know, right into them. So of course, as one would, they were like, you've got to be pranking me. They both thought that the other person must have been pranking them. And this led them to one very scary night where Donna knows for sure that she put the doll in another room. And then when she came home, the doll was sitting on the couch, like eyeballing her and had what looked to be blood on her hands. So at this point, she needs to just throw the whole apartment away. She doesn't end up moving out. Instead, she goes to a medium. And the medium ends up telling her that this doll is haunted by either a six or a 10 year old, I've seen both, by the name of Annabelle Higgins, who apparently died on the property. And what the medium told them was that Annabelle just felt very comfortable with them. And Donna being the sweet person that she was, um, was like, hey, maybe she can just stay here. So they invited Annabelle 
to stay in the doll. They did a little seance or whatever. And she's already always felt this deep connection and love for this doll. So she was like, why not let her in thinking that everything would be fine now that she knows, oh, this little girl named Annabelle is living in this doll. But things got a lot scarier. It did not go as planned. I've been dying to try glitter brows, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Essentially, things got so much worse and Donna felt awful. She felt solely responsible. They were living in fear in this apartment. Very interesting. So Donna needs a road trip. She needs a break. She needs to get out of there. And if you remember our friend Lou, he's back again and he decides to spend the night just to protect them. And Louie boy gets a very severe case of sleep paralysis. A lot of people going through sleep paralysis will actually see things that are demonic or scary because your mind will be partially awake and start to make up reasons on why you can't move. I cannot tell if I love this or hate this or even if I did it right. I feel like it's too thick but Miss Annabelle pops up from the end of the bed, is looking at him and crawls on top of him and starts to choke him and then he wakes up on the couch. So the next day, Lou wakes up, tells Donna and Angie about it and they're like, oh my God. And apparently they hear Annabelle making rustling sounds around in their room. So he walks over to Annabelle to go confront her, leans down to pick her up and then stands back up and has three scratches down his shirt that are bleeding so badly that it soaked his shirt. They were similar to knife cuts and they ended up healing in about three days. So they were like, okay, this is some heavy duty stuff. We're gonna have to get the priest in here. And this is when they called, I don't know if it's pronounced N-E-S-P-R or if it's Nesper or whatever, I cannot remember, but that's whatever they called Ed and Lorraine's little business together. And they ended up determining that no, this was no little girl inside of this doll, but instead it was in fact a demon. Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh no. Holy oh, Spirit, no. Oh, activate. No. Holy Spirit, activate. Activate, activate. <laughs> All right, let's go. And they ended up saying that this doll had actually lied to the girls and was looking for a human host. I mean, if that's not the most terrifying thing you've ever heard. And according to them, they were just a few weeks away from this occurring. Like one of them dying and Annabelle taking over. I don't know what that was. Annabelle taking over. So the priest comes in and does a cleanse of the house and Ed and Lorraine suggest that they take the doll since the girls and Lou just are not strong enough to fend for themselves against this doll. So they take Annabelle back to their little museum with them at their house. And apparently on the way home, they were having so many car troubles that they were having to actually stop the car, turn around, do a little blessing and throw holy water on this doll. I would just, just throw it out. I don't know. So I'm just reading this again. And apparently some of the stuff that was going down in the car was they were witnessing her levitating and giggling. I would be finding a new hobby. So later on, a priest actually came into Ed and Lorraine's little museum to come bless her. She's been hidden in this glass case that's been just blessed to the heavens. And apparently this one particular priest came in and was trying to show that he wasn't scared of Annabelle and actually like lifted her up and said, you're just a doll or whatever. And Ed and Lorraine were like, oh, oh, that's, <laughs> no, no, that's not a good idea. But apparently the priest got into a car accident on the way home. And he said that that was due to Miss Annabelle. Of course she would, that sneaky little thing. And Annabelle has been the source of a lot of drama since she's been in there. Uh, people that come that are disrespectful to her. She apparently also goes after similarly to Robert the doll, but it seems like she does it with a vengeance. This one couple came in and was being totally disrespectful to her. And then they hopped on their little motorcycle and were making fun of Annabelle the whole ride home and crash. And she was in the hospital for weeks or months and he actually died. Basically to this day, she still believes that it was Annabelle who took the life of her boyfriend and caused that horrific incident. Sorry guys, I had to switch the lashes out. The other ones were just too far gone. 
But one of the funny things is that whole meme that came out that she left, like genuinely, like there was so many things that came out. Where, where did that even originate from? I know that Haley Elizabeth also did a video on this and I really want to play some of the TikToks that she showed because I was dying laughing. So, hey girl, if you're watching this, I'm going to show some of your TikToks that you showed on your Robert the Doll and Annabelle video. <laughs> I said on my feet. Annabelle. Hello? I'm out. Swell. I swell. I Stop swell. Playing. They could they couldn't catch me. Oh, they couldn't catch me. <laughs> they couldn't catch me. Okay, so before I show you guys my doll, let me tell you a little bit about her first. The thing is, is that I don't know much about her. Um, and I maybe she's not even haunted, you know. Um if there's any psychics watching this, please let me know what you think and what your take is. But basically, she is this little doll that sits in a rocker and plays Jesus Loves Me. And I've had her since I was a little girl. And she was given to me by my grandma, who has since passed away. I'm pretty sure that's where my family thinks I got her from. We're not positive. Um, there's been weird happenings with a lot of the dolls that have come out of my family's farm. We've had it since like the early 1900s, so we're not really sure like what land that's on, who originally lived there, what's going on there, and why that area is just so haunted. So I've also had the thought that maybe something followed me from there. It would be very interesting. But essentially, she will play her music in response to certain questions sometimes. Like even when she's not wound up and I don't know, I don't know why. The other day I heard her singing in the attic and so I went to go find her and I haven't had her outside of my toy box that I have put in there from all my past childhood memories in a long time. She was just sitting there chilling on top of the box rocking and singing her Jesus Loves Me song. And the thing is I really don't get bad vibes from her. Like that sounds very creepy but I, I don't feel that way with this doll. I don't feel like she's bad energy but again I don't know if it's like an Annabelle situation where she's presenting to be not that bad and she really is that bad maybe she's not even haunted at all maybe this is all just like what does Jeremy say a figment of your imagination <laughs> so I would really just like to leave this up to you guys to let me know what you think about this doll and if you think this doll is haunted or not mm, it smells so good <laughs> this is my bestie don't we look cute together so I've always wondered like what is the appeal of haunted dolls there's a lot of people on eBay who actually collect haunted dolls or sell their haunted dolls and they'll tell you like little snippets about them I really don't know how, how real some of this stuff is but I'm very interested to know if you guys think she's haunted or not because of how often she sings I like let me show you what she sounds like wound up. Let's do this. And so she will literally do that randomly without me having to wind her up prior. So just wondering what you guys think. I've used my EMF detector on her a few times and nothing's really like went off. So I feel like we're good there, but I'm gonna use my copper rods to ask her some questions. Let me see if I can put her on my shoulder. I feel like we're kind of a cute duo, low key. Anyways. Okay guys, I have my copper rods and I have this little girl and we're gonna ask her some questions together. Okay, so can you give me a yes? And can you give me a no? Are we alone right now? I appreciate you for being here with me today. Are you haunting my doll?
Are you above the age of 10? No. Are you younger than five? Are you eight? No. Nine? That looks like a yes. Are you a girl? This feels a little similar to the story I just told. Okay. Okay, guys. So I found a website that's going to help me ask her some questions. I've never done this before. We're just going to see how this goes. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Are you a girl? Are you nine years old? I have incense going right now to help <laughs> cleanse the room. Are you secretly a demon? No, thank God. Do you know about Annabelle? Is Annabelle evil? I'm gonna have to go back through and listen to this background too. Why did you come here? What is your name? What is your name? Guys, I don't know. Ooh, okay. Were you born after the year 1950? Oh no. Were you someone who died at this house? Are you a relative of mine? No. Do you want to harm me? It was a very quiet no. Do you get mad at me sometimes? What do I ask that's a yes or no question? Are you mad at me for putting you in the attic? That's what it is. Are you happier now that you're out of the attic? Yeah. Would you prefer me keep you in my room? Would you like to sit on my shelf? Would, would you like to sit on my desk? Okay. I think she's going to take my desk. Are you looking for a human host? No. Okay. That's good. Are you comfortable on my shoulder? <laughs> this is kind of cute. Do you need any help passing over? No. Are you able to tell me your name? Maybe. Is that a maybe, you guys? Show me a maybe. Okay, that's a maybe. I don't wanna get a Ouija board. <laughs> Do I need a Ouija board to know your name? Maybe. We can try other methods first. I really don't want to buy a Ouija board, you guys. Okay, well, thank you so much for talking to me. Yes, you can stay on my desk. Yay. All right, I'm going to go now. Thank you. So I guess what we found out was that she is a ghost of a nine-year-old girl, hopefully, praying, praying. Um, 
And yeah, and she prefers being in here, although she's been pretty upset with me for putting her in the attic for all those years. That's probably why she was playing her music. Um, yeah, so I think I'll keep her out here with me. If you guys can think of any more questions that I can ask her, I would love to find out. Or if you have better methods for me talking to her, because I don't know if I liked that spirit box or not. I'm not sure, but thank you guys so much. Mwah! Where's that girl Kelsey when you need her? Okay, so I'm sitting here doing video editing. And I don't know if you guys can hear that sound. What was that? Okay.